Myers Metal Detectors, located in sunny Tampa, Florida. Where we sell nothing but fun and adventures, treasure hunting gear, and anything you can imagine for metal detecting. Give us a call, 813-237-1939. Happy hunting and dig deeper. Hi, from sunny Florida, it's Treasure Talk. Welcome, friends. Welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. Welcome to another exciting edition of Treasure Talk. And <laughs> it started out exciting. Oh, it? it did, didn't it, Jeff? I, I don't did. know. It finally, uh, I don't know how it happened, but uh, the cam got uh, muted and so did the mic. Yeah, it happened to me too. And I didn't know what it was. I just signed back in. So, oh, I was thinking, oh, no, I hope it's not the gremlin starting all over because we've got an awesome lineup today, don't we? Yes, we do. Well, this whole week's going to be awesome. Yes, it um, is. You know, we got some, uh, we got a little bit of news to share right off the bat, you know, about the uh, Myers Pro Handle. Um, they came in, and I have to tell you what, they are awesome. They, unfortunately, they were mismeasured, and they're a little too big to fit the Treasure Talk Pro Sifter Titanium. However, you should have got something today to measure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I'll get it tomorrow because I I didn't know if it came USPS or the UPS. Normally, they bring this stuff by my house if it's UPS, but I'll get that tomorrow and we'll get it measured, get it exact because we want it to fit in with ease. And the ones I have here now, I don't have a lot of them, but if somebody has a cube scoop, those would fit perfect. And but, checking if they got stopper scoops, it may fit in a stopper scoop yeah, as well. It, yes, it will. I think that's the size. It's like 30 millimeters. So if it's 30 to 32 millimeters, that's the perfect uh, handle for it. But I want to tell you, I was going to show people what they're going to be. And we'll probably have them by the end of the month, I think. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome handle. And it's so much more durable. You know, uh, there's no... There's no play, uh, I guess, uh, there, when you're digging in it, it's going to be more firm. Oh, yeah, firm. there's no no play at all. Yes. Plus. <laughs> yes. Right there, buddy. Yeah, I got the name on it and everything. And I like and that. Real nice handle. Yes. And yes. this is the kicker. This is the kicker. Yeah, it's a travel handle. This is the travel handle. And a lot of travel handles are very flimsy. Yeah, this one isn't. But I'm going to tell you what, as soon as I get this thing unscrewed, you will see. It's got it's heavy made, and it's got foam injection, so it'll probably float. It'll probably stand up uh, if you're in the water, if you let go of it. So uh, I'm going to tell you what, this is the one. This is yeah. the one. And yeah, I'll have to cool. tell you, it is... It is probably, I would say, easily double or triple the strength. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to break that handle. I've, I've seen a couple people break a CKG handle. You ain't breaking this one. You you're not going to break that one for sure. No, nope, you won't. I did want to tell people happy uh, uh, Eclipse Day. I didn't see the eclipse, but I'm sure some of the, you folks out there did. I saw it on the television. Yes, I saw it on the TV, too. I didn't want to damage my eyes. And also, uh, happy National Banjo Day. Can't I didn't know it was National Banjo Day. but it, it is National Banjo Day. That fits right into you. Yes, it does, for sure. So, yes, it uh, does. So let's remind people as well, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, it is the Grand Treasure Talk special grand show yes from sebastian florida on the treasure coast with a lot of special guests it's going to be fun 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 we'll be on at eight o'clock so yes set your reminders right. if you're not subscribed subscribe if you don't have notifications set up ask for all notifications yes be sure to like it and subscribe for sure and you don't want to miss thursday night show because it's going to be epic as it always is, Jeff, when you do those. It is. It's it's a good I'm good time. Down there with you. It's, it's yeah, well, you're gonna have to, you know, get free. Yeah, it's gonna happen one day. 
for sure. Monday. So let's go ahead and let's do all our housekeeping and we yeah. get in with us. We better do that for sure. As always, today today's show is brought to you by your friends at Myers Metal Detectors, where we sell fun and adventure. And of course, the views, thoughts, and opinions expressed here on Treasure Talk by the guest and member belong solely to the guest and member, not necessarily to Phil Myers, Shossel Myers, Myers Metal Detectors, or Jeff Moni. And of course, the purpose of Treasure Talk is to promote the hobby of metal detecting and treasure hunting in all forms. And it educate our members in a fun informative manner and we're going to do just that and i did want to before we jump into our guests i want to remind folks that uh i looked at gold the gold price today have you seen that jeff no i didn't i've been busy all day two thousand three hundred and forty one dollars an ounce and you I know, need to find some by golly yes you need to find about I don't know, 10 12 ounces Yes, we need to be hunting every day for eight hours a day for gold because, you know, the, I think it, personally, I think the way our country is, we're spending so much money and the and the, the dollar's been devalued and gold keeps going up. So oh, Yeah, but they don't keep buying it. They buy uh, titanium. And, yes, uh, that's the only bad thing when you're out there looking. But if you, if you think about it, if you find like a 10 or 11 gram ring today, nice fat wedding band it's like four hundred dollars in scrap value yeah so you yeah. gotta get out there and be searching for it for sure guys well i'll be doing that this week friday and saturday so well let's just hope the beaches are real we'll get a report here yeah we're going to get a report from terry and it's uh i already asked him about it it's not 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 great job well it, it'll be what it'll be i don't want to discourage you but I'm it, sure it's it's sure awesome. week i'll be out there Low tide is at 9.08 on Friday. I'll be out there at 7 a.m. There you go. You just uh, pound it anyway because, you know, stuff is found for sure. Yep. We never know. So, are we ready here? Yes, we are. Let's bring on our guests. Okay. From the Treasure Coast, you've met him before, and he's a very exciting individual. Fred has been with us before, and he will be with us again. He is an extremely uh, talented author, a very talented detectorist had, that has works the beaches of the Treasure Coast. He also um, hunts relics up in uh, South Dakota. I think it's South Dakota or North Dakota, one of the two. And he finds all kinds of Indian relics, and he's got a book on that as well. It's a very, very nice person and an extremely talented uh, individual and a good teacher. Let's go down to the Treasure Coast and let's meet up with Fred Banky. And that ain't Fred. That's hey, not Fred. Jeff and Phil, how are you doing? I heard that you're gonna have this deal tonight over at Fred's place. So I wanted to stop over and I'm outside his house right now. Let's go in and see Fred. Go beat on the door, Terry. Okay. Hey Fred, open up there, pal. <laughs> hey guys, Terry, good yeah. to see you again, buddy. Boy, it's good to see you again, there, pal. Welcome to Treasure Talk. Hey, Treasure hey, Talk. Fred, how are Fred. you, Fred? I'm doing super fantastic, and uh, we'll try to have a really good show for you tonight. I tell you what, you definitely need to get one of those doorbell cams so you can see it's your door. <laughs> I, it's scary who comes to the door around here sometimes. Well, I know. So, I love the church too, Fred. So I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. This is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you'll be back. So um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was in the movie Batman uh, back many years ago. Yes, the freeze. I was, I was working for a resin company, and uh, there was a special effects company working on the movie Batman when he when Arnold played Mr. Freeze, and uh, I did some consulting for them, and I must have did a good job because they called me later and they said, "Fred, is there anything we can do for you?" And I said, "Send me some small thing from the movie just for show and tell." And they made fourteen of these. Um, Bust of Arnold Schwarzenegger, one for every Planet Hollywood restaurant and one for me. Well, that's good. Well, you know, uh, you could you could start serving food, man. 
<laughs> I, I, I did have to promise that I'd never make a mold to sell Arnold Schwarzenegger Halloween masks. That's probably a good thing. So That's next cool. Arnold we have right here. This is a this is a, a Springfield 1873 rifle, and this is what they used in the Indian Wars. Cool. Well, before we get right into it, Fred, why don't you tell everybody because there's a lot of new people on tonight. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about you, uh, where you hunt, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, uh, I've been I've been uh, hunting almost 20 years now, metal detecting. I used to live down in West Palm Beach, and I'd come up to the Treasure Coast weekends and uh, spend the weekend metal detecting, and that was my release and my getaway from West Palm Beach. And then I moved up here. I bought property in 2010, and I built this house in 2015, excuse me, 2015, and retired on Elvis's birthday, 2016. You left and, the building. And so that was January the 8th, 2016. And I've been metal detecting up here. And three years ago, uh, a guy from North Dakota, he came down, and Marcus Waters came down, and contacted me. He read my book, uh, it got my book at the museum and contacted me. And I spent a week or two out there on the beaches, metal detecting with him. He invited me up to North Dakota. He never even dreamed I was going to go up, show up up there. But I called him three years ago and said that I bought a new Jeep and I'm on my way up. And I've been metal detecting for three years in North Dakota and metal detecting the Indian Wars up there. So I've got display cases from the Indian Wars, and I've got display cases from down here on the Treasure Coast. And also you're an author, isn't that right, Phil? Yes. yes. I, have, I have three books, two of them on metal detecting the Treasure Coast, and one of them, it's not really, it started off as a metal detecting book of the Indian Wars, Northern Plains Indian Wars, and it turned into a history book about the Indian Wars with some metal detecting in the background. That's okay. Yeah. It's a great book. Yeah, we we learn from our history for sure. Yeah, can I tell you how I met Fred? Go ahead. Yeah, Fred and I are pretty good friends. And I met him last year. Fred was giving a talk at the McLarity Museum. And I heard about him. And, and so I go down to listen to his talk. And actually, he was pretty impressed. I know I said it was a good talk. When he got done, Fred thanked the audience, said he hoped he enjoyed the show. And if they enjoyed his talk, his name was Fred Banky, but if he did, didn't like it, he was Terry Shannon. And that's where the friendship began. <laughs> that sounds like Fred. <laughs> that's Fred Banky, all right. So in the first display case, this is from up North Dakota, it, the Indian Wars, and these are three ringer bullets. This is a 12-pound cannonball that I found last year. It was two and a half feet down, and I was metal detecting with an oak to legend, and it was two and a half feet feet down and it about blew my ears off. Well, I bet. What coil were you using on that, Fred? I was using the six inch coil. And still two and a half feet down. That's That goes to show you that the size of the coil, if it's a large target, you're still gonna get, you know, feet rather than inches if it's a large target. Absolutely, and these, these are pieces here of, um, cannonball that were fired at the Indians. Now, this fort that we metal detected up there, it was um, attacked by Sitting Bull and the Lakota Indians several times. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was uh, metal detecting there the, the first year, I was only there five days, the second year, three weeks. And then this last year, it was about six weeks I was there. And Mr. Terry Shannon joined me for two and a half days. And uh, it was a thrill for me to see him metal detecting. It was like a kid in a candy store. The first half day he was getting these, uh, I took him to a field where there was nothing but, but uh, these pistol bullets. And it's phenomenal. I mean, every time I swung the coil, it was going over two or three pistol bullets and I was just digging like mad. And Fred was just standing there watching me. But I was out there for, for two and a half days and I think I come home well over 200 bullets, bullets and and, uh, and cases from the Indian Wars. It was a heck of an experience. Hmm. So walking walking down the fields, what what we discovered was the, the there was a lot of there's a lot of history about 
um, Sitting Bull attacking the fort from the southern side of the fort and separating the, the, the military from their water source, which was the Missouri River. Well, they, they, they had the fort under siege for about two or three weeks, something like that. And uh, what they ended up doing was firing the cannon at the, at, the, uh, at the Indians. They were firing cannons at them, and they finally dispersed them. But the Indians had taken over the sawmill and the ice house down by the river. But uh, we, what we discovered was there was um, and also another attack from the northern side of the fort, which makes more sense because that's where the armory and the, the powder magazine was. And you can see there's, there's fired bullets and dud bullets and some that weren't fired. Now, we were able to walk down the field and just in straight rows and pick up bullets. Yeah, well, then. <clears throat> It was really neat. I went into the field, you know, every bullet we found was shot by the Indians at the cavalry. And every shell casing we found was shot at the, by the cavalry at the Indians. Then we went over to the other side and just the opposite was true. And, you know, the ones that I've got, I've kept them separate. You know, it's just really, really a nice piece of history. It was fun. So uh, another really rare piece I've got right here is this piece of lead. It's a strip of lead and it says a St. Louis shot. And it is missing the word tower. Now, the St. Louis Shot Tower is where they used to make the musket balls. And if, if you don't know what a shot tower is, it's a tower about 150 feet tall. And they pour molten lead through a screen. And by the time it reaches the water at the bottom to cool, it's a perfect sphere. And that's how they used to make the, um, the musket balls. Hmm. And they also, they also had... Um, strips of lead from the St. Louis Shot Tower, and they would set, set that, they would sell that, and the soldiers or the hunters, uh, would, the trappers would snip off a piece of lead and melt the lead and make their own, um, make their own bullets and, and musket balls that way. Now, the gun you showed us, Brad. Yeah. Show us that gun again, because there's been a lot of people joined since that time and what bullets would go in that so the cartridge would go right in this big cartridge right there would go in that right there and so it was a single would, fire bullet then yeah and then there would and that was a percussion cap used on that to fire wasn't it or was it no there's no percussion cap because these bullets were already Oh, okay. It's already in the yeah, They were center fire then. Yeah, so what you had, they had center fire and they had rim fire bullets. Okay. So explain what that means, Fred, for those that may not know. Okay, this would be a, a, a center fire would be this piece right there. And a rim fire would be around the, out, anywhere around the outside edge or in the center there also. It was, it was a different, um, different, I, I don't believe I've got the rim fire there to show you. Um, but it was a, it was a, uh, the, the rim fire was a lot less reliable. We got more duds with the rim fire. Is that true? I believe so. Okay. This, uh, one of some of the other stuff I have here, these, these are kind of interesting and I've got a pile of them right here, but this is called a, a primer and this came with the can to fire the cannon. So, this would go down into the top of the cannon, and then this piece of wire was attached to a lanyard, and they would actually yank on the lanyard and pull this, and it would create a spark. It would go down and into the cannon and fire the cannon. <laughs> I'll be darned. And I've got a whole bunch of those primers right down there. And Marcus, he had a, he had a really good find because it was a whole complete um, like tin casing full of the little – uh, wire prime wire pulls and stuff on them. Did you know what primer, Phil? Pardon me. Did you know how they use that primer thing? No, not on the can on the cannon. No, no, I had no clue. Yeah, of course so, I'd have been dead long ago. They'd have shot me right off because I would. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like we got a question from San Truck Truckley Fred. She's asking, you dug all that up. And my also my other question I have is 
How many bullets did you guys dig? Well, I'm going to show you. I've got some more on the table, and, and I, I lit, literally hundreds and hundreds of bullets. I mean, going up there, I didn't find that many the first year, but, but the second year and, and this third year I was up there, it, it was just unbelievable. I, I, I've got some cases just full of cartridges and bullets, and you, you can see how many holes I dug. Well, yeah, that's better than doing, a, you know, a 500 burpees. So this is, an this is an interesting find right here. This is a cartridge that's actually been hit by a bullet. interesting so and then um uh, over here we this is a borman fuse and they used these during the civil war and a borman fuse you could set uh, the fuse was in the cannonball these ones that explode they, they would be in that cannonball and you you could set that to how many seconds you wanted it to explode after it left the cannon so they'd measure you know they get a rough idea of the distance and then then they would set the fuse, and then they would fire the cannon. And it looks like we had a questions from James Studer, and he's asking, did you find any cannons? I know you found some cannonballs. But no. I did not find a cannon, but there, there have been found, they have found cannons buried around that fort also. Jeez. This is this is getting in into the uniform parts. This is an epaulette, so this would go on the shoulder. And this and that was Union cavalry up there. Well, it would, infantry and cavalry and artillery. They would all have those. And this this is a uh, this is for putting tension on the line to hold a tent down. Yeah. Those are found. They're pretty common. I've seen. They're pretty common, them. and this one's got the patent number on there, so it's it was real easy to look up. Yeah, that's neat. Hey, we did. We've had questions rolling in here. Okay. Um, Ricky T's asking, "How hard was the ground?" Well, uh, let me show you how hard the ground was. Let's go back to this one right here. This is a piece of the dirt with a bullet in it, and it's like concrete. The dirt's like concrete. So this would be clay, and it hardens up like concrete, and it was a bear to do some digging. Jeez. Hey, here's um, another question from Sam Truckley. She wants to know, what was the largest item that you found? Um, it, it probably, um, I found pieces of, of uh, iron stoves and stuff. I, I, I did find a rifle barrel as well. But I would say that cannonball was the largest. The cannonball was probably the largest mass piece. Uh, all right. And we got this other question from Howie uh, Graphics Adventures. He's asking, tell, tell us about the gophers. Well, okay. Well, the gophers, here, here's a, uh, this, th these are called eagle buttons. And the eagle buttons, you can tell the C is for cavalry, the I is for infantry, and this one here is they came all the way from Rhode Island, and that's the seal of Rhode Island, and that's an artillery button. So gophers, the farmers hate gophers, and gophers are our friends. So if you, uh, you look at this button, it's completely corroded and everything. And what happened was I, there was a bunch of glass around a gopher hole, and so I went and metal detected the gopher hole, and I found 11 of the, uh, the rifle cartridges and this one button there. And this button is corroded more than anything, and it was completely black. And I believe it was because a gopher peed on it or something and cleaned it, cleaned the gophers, clean out their holes. And I, I actually drove around looking for gopher holes. And I found another gopher hole and found another eagle button right outside of that gopher hole. Well, they probably collected them. They dig them up and then they feel like the shiny or whatever. And, uh, and maybe they were just gopher hoarders. I don't know. I don't know. They peed on this one, though, so they didn't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see a, a lot of the, the buttons, some of them are gold wash buttons down here. This is interesting stuff. This is copper with gold plating on it, and it's really thin, and I actually dug up uh, part of a house there, 
And a lot of this stuff came out of that, that house area. Uh, this trim, um, this Virgin Mary medallion right here. Uh, this little girl's ring right here. And uh, a lot of the buttons, um, this came out of there too. And this was really neat. This was this is two cartridges put where they've actually uh, joined them together. And one end's alive and the other one's been fired. So I was going to kind of wait for the show and then do a grand reveal, pulling them apart. Pulling them apart and then... Um, and and but uh, I I decided just to open it anyway, and there was nothing inside. Cool. And then this is a top of a um, this is a top of a, um, a of a canteen. Okay, and you just need to hold the camera down a little bit more so we can see. We we lost you up here. Let's mess around for a second. Yeah, there, there you go. That's a lot of digging. Yeah, did you see this question, Phil? Yeah, I did. I was going to let you get that one, Jeff. Okay. Uh, Fred and Terry. Uh, Louis Villarreal wants to know, have you found any remains of any of the soldiers or Indians during the digs? And he's apologizing for a morbid question. He, he she, He's apologizing to Jocelyn because Jocelyn thinks we're morbid. Doesn't she, Phil? <laughs> well, we we found a lot a of good bones. day. On a we, good day, we're morbid. Yes, Jeff. That's why I was letting. That's why I was letting you ask, ask that question. I knew what you were doing. <laughs> we found a lot of bones, but they are all animal bones. Um, they're either cattle or horses and stuff like that. This this is an interesting piece right here. This this is the the top part of a parade helmet. That holds the, the horsehair plume in the top. Cool. It's got the eagle on there, and this would fit right on top of the helmet. And we're just gonna jump over here for a minute, and I'll show you. Uh, this is this helmet. This is a parade helmet, and the Indian Wars helmets were just like this helmet, only they didn't have the number on the on the shield on the eagle. Now. Mark, Marcus Waters, he found one of these eagles off of the helmet, and it's just a beautiful find. And yeah. here's you, you, if you look at the top, you'll see this round piece that holds the actual horsehair plume. Cool. This helmet was from the Spanish-American Wars, not the Indian Wars. Okay, but, we got a question from uh, uh, right. Rake right. Osborne. Are these uh, item descriptions in your book? Which book would they be in? They'd be in the, the Indian War. Book. They would be in the Indian War book right here. And uh, there's a description of the items in the back. Yeah. In the back of the book. And there's also, um, I also did find some coins there for you coin collectors. This is a 1859 uh, Canadian one cent piece. And I... Like an idiot, I destroyed it by cleaning it. Oh, so. that's okay. Hey, Fred, that plume holder, that, that's all in one piece then, huh? It, it's actually, um, yeah, it's actually, it's actually uh, two pieces joined together. I think there's a joint right in the back. I mean, but right what, did you find it as one piece, though? I, I did find it as one piece, and that was in that hard dirt as well. Yeah, because I found a lot of those here in Tampa from Fort Brook, which would have been probably from the 1820s, but okay. a different style, but it looks just like it, but never two of them together. They're all, you always find them in pieces. Oh, that's, okay. a, that's a cool find. I mean, yeah, I, I was thrilled to death when I found that one. I also, um, some of the coins I found, I found two Indian pennies. I found five, uh, four shield nickels. And I found three um, three dimes and really neat dime here. This one is uh, 1877, and I believe they call that a folded dime. And it you can actually see where it was actually bent on purpose. Was it carved or anything like a love token, or is just folded? I it's, it's it. Somebody actually took either a chisel or a screwdriver and and 
bent that on purpose. And I believe they did it as as kind of like a protection, protective type of thing, uh, just a belief that they they would be protected or something. Okay, but, we need to, if you can, Fred, hold the items closer to the camera or have the camera person okay. there we go. in there, there so they can see it a little better. Yeah. And if you notice this one here, this is a Carson City Mint, which was uh, was kind of rarer than the rest of, you know, Philadelphia Mint and the others. Yeah, that's cool. That is very cool. And then what else do we have in here? Um, the various buttons, there's a whole collection of different buttons and different uh, horse tack pieces. This is a piece of belt with the leather still in it. Uh, some more. This is a toe tapper. You guys probably seen a lot of those. Civil War hunting. So this some is of you a, people haven't seen anything like that, Fred. So okay. you know, get the camera in there as close as you can, because a lot that, of the folks haven't seen any of this stuff. That is a toe tapper. This is a. Um, the Indians used to take the cartridges, and you see how they cut this one, and they punched holes in it, and they would wear these. And the, um, this was found around the um, where the cattle were, and and they they actually had one Indian scout that was killed at the fort protecting the cattle. Hmm. They wore that like a dangler. Yeah, so, it's so like that, a dangler type of thing. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Catherine Han Powell would like to know if you found anything with an, anybody's name on it. No, nothing with anybody's name on it. Um, I, but I've been researching to trying to find out um, who was at the fort and, and what buildings and who was actually in the building that uh, I was at because we're going to leave the military buttons and come over to some of the other items over here. Okay, well, we got uh, Bob Kulik because you said you found those with a legend. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely what? hunted for six weeks up there with a legend. And there's so much trash, so much tin in that whole area around the fort that it um, that it uh, the legend worked better than anything I've ever used. It, it was just fantastic using the legend because I could I could I could um, actually distinguish the the tin metal from the buttons, from the bullets, from everything else. Cool. He wants to know what the VDI numbers are the, or the bullets. What the... Is that the VDI number? We didn't... Every time it made a noise, you're just talking about there was no trash. It was all bullets. Yeah, it's all bullets. He just yeah. wanted to know the VDI numbers that the bullets rang up. I, the bullets rang up around around a... Uh, I believe around a 38, something like that. Okay. I, 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 um, what I did was... I did. I, I made a card and I laminated the card so I could take it with me of all the of all the numbers from the bullets, the cartridges, so I could distinguish what was what. And I'd keep that with me as I was going around. The, the because the uh, the eagle buttons ring up different, and the little tiny eagle buttons ring up different. Cool. And getting into that house area, we've got a whole bunch of. Um, we got a whole bunch of stuff here, including a German marble that we they, they would bring from Germany back in the 1800s. Some cutlery. This is a really interesting. This is part of a, a, a two foot diameter saw blade, and the original saw belt, I believe I told you, was um, taken over by the Indians by by Sitting Bull, and they fired the cannon. So this could have been part of the original saw blade, and it would have been broken up by the cannonballs. Hmm. Uh, Fred, I tell you what I'd like to do tonight, though. I'd like to buy one of the books, your books, and use it as a giveaway, and I'll pay you for it on Thursday night. Well, okay, but I'm going to give away two books tonight. Okay, and they're book to their choice. We'll, we'll we'll make we'll make the ones we give away tonight. Um, whatever choice you want. What do you think? It's up to you. Let's let the, let the winner. We'll have okay. two winners, and they can pick. We'll give the two real deal metal detecting the Treasure Coast ones because we're going to jump over there before we run out of time. Yes. There, there, there was some neat stuff like this uh, porcelain doll's head. Um, 
this this pocket knife was found in the Indian area. So I'm I'm just telling everybody that was Sitting Bull's lost pocket knife right there. Well, it was for sure. Hey, uh, Fred, we do have a question from uh, the Mumbles man. Yeah. Have you detected any water near the fort? Any water? I've detected down by the Missouri River. And I found a shovel, some axe heads, some axe heads and stuff like that. Okay. And then uh, do uh, I saw a question come through here, but it went by real quick. So I don't know who was asking, but they were asking if you found any uh, uh, bullets that they had turned into fishing weights. That was Louis I have, or I have not, but I, I do have one bullet I want to show you. And That's that is uh, right here. And th this this bullet right here has scratched on it. it. It's been flattened, and that bullet has on there has W dot O F dot. And I researched that, and it means warriors of faith. So I believe it's got a hole punched in there, and I believe that somebody sewed that into their tunic. And some yeah. and this was found in the same house as the Catholic. Virgin Mary. So it must have been a really religious couple, couple that uh, that lived there. Can I rub that for luck this weekend? You can. I'll bring this for you to rub for luck this weekend. <laughs> I might rub the rub it so hard I'll rub into the, the letters off of it. I doubt you'll do that. So then, now we're getting into the the uh, the fleet stuff, the the Treasure Coast fleet stuff. This is a this is a cannonball that I found on Turtle Trail. Um, this is the this is the pillars that you might have seen before, and these are made of bronze with with um, nine karat gold plating on there, wash on there. And this is this was found uh, at a treasure ship site, and it's really nobody knows exactly what it is. But I had one archaeologist tell me that it's um, a religious artifact and would have been. It, it's a travel version of something that would be behind an altar. So it hang behind an altar on the ship, maybe, and it's a travel version, and there would have been a scroll. Normally, they would have a painting or something hanging there. So, hey, so, it looks like we have some more questions here, but I wanted to read this comment. It's from yeah. Catherine, Catherine Powell. She said, glad to hear you using the legend. I bought one from Phil. So thank you, Catherine, for buying that. And it is an awesome detector, as you can see by the treasure that's uh, found here, for sure. Well, Terry was using it up there, too, I think. Yes, I was. I was using the legend. I've got the legend there with me all the time. And, and we got a question here, Phil. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it from D. O'Brien. Hi, guys. I'm glad to be back. Question for Fred. Did you find any art or carvings, personal items, possibly? And that could be for the Treasure Coast or up at the up at the fort site. Like both car boats and stuff. Any what? Carved carvings. Carvings? Yeah. No, no carved bullets. Only that flattened bullet with the W O F on it. That would have been the only one. You find any personal items. Personal yeah. items. Anything personal. Any personal? There's some harmonica um, reeds back there. There's um, pocket knives. Um, yeah, yeah not too many personal items. Okay. Now, getting back to the Treasure Coast here, this is a a um, this is a sword handle. This is the lead part portion of a sword handle, the pummel, and that would have been wrapped with like silver wire. Uh, found this treasure chest key. That's a very unusual key if you look at the actual piece. Yeah, that looks that looks uh, fort period, or rather uh, treasure coast period. And and then and all of this was treasure coast. And then right near the key, I found these hinges, maybe from a treasure chest. Well, that's very possible. And then uh, let's look at uh, let let's look at the ring right here. This ring has been a fairly recent find. And this is my, uh, I call it my Maltese cross or, or um, Knights of Malta ring. And this was found amongst uh, uh, a lot of bronze spikes that Terry and I were, were digging. And this could date back to the 1500s.
because those the the Spanish military had three different types of three different religious groups within the military. The, and one of them was the the Knights of Malta. And the Knights of Malta were formed after the night the Knights of Templars left Malta. That's a cool find, Fred. That had to that had to set your hair on fire. That was a heart stopper and I, Terry could see me jumping up and down when he saw it, when I found that one. I was standing right beside him when he dug it up. So you That's guys a good I, luck charm, Terry. You I guys mean, hunt the treasure coast all the time. What is your favorite beach over there to hunt? <laughs> My favorite beach is the one that I just experienced some erosion. I have found That's Spanish right. coins from the inlet all the way up to Patrick's Air Force Base. So there's treasure on every beach out there. It just you have to be able to reach it. Yeah. And then um, I found a lot of this stuff, like the cannonball, um, pottery, a whole bunch of spikes, the sword handle, the key. I found all those at Turtle Trail. The musket balls came from Turtle Trail. Terry's got like 120 some. No, I got 220 two musket balls there in a two-day or three-day period at Turtle Trail. The problem with Turtle Trail is right now is they're dumping sand all over it and it's closed. You know, but we there's have, a sad thing. To, to tell them about that sad thing by your hand there. That, oh, this here? That real sad. Uh, so I, so I, I arranged to meet Terry at, uh, at, uh, down on Turtle Trail one day, and um, I, I was I was a little bit late getting there because I was showing a get, guy the beach, teaching him the beach and everything. And I walked up to Terry, and um, this was laying in the water, just in the wet sand, right next, well, about ten feet from Terry. And I walked up to Terry and I said, Terry, are you blind? And yeah, I was grid in the area and I would have found it shortly. So, but I don't resent it. Not hardly much. <laughs> a little bit. You know, well, actually a lot. You know, I'm the legend and I don't even have one. And you can see what this is. This is the actual neck of an olive jar right there. Oh, nice. And there is very, and like anybody can find the pottery and stuff from the fleet, but not very many people find the necks. And I do congratulate you, Fred. I'm glad that you found it. And this this is another piece of pottery that I found. I don't have one of those either. <laughs> 1715 fleet. I don't believe you've got the glass either, Terry. <laughs> you can see the bubbles in the glass. We can put that in the light. And you can see all the bubbles. I don't think you have that either, do you? Well, I've got some glass. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. This was my latest piece I found right there. You can see all the glass in that. And we have That's a comment, cool. Fred. From Pardon Melissa me? Hall, it says it sure was nice for uh, Marcus Waters to let you hunt up there. And by the way, Marcus says hello. Well, hey, brother Marcus. I tell you, he's a real gentleman. When I was up there, he met us. He had a gift for me when I arrived. He come out every day with water for us. That, and was, the Jeff. that was Jeff, not oh, Marcus. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. But Mark, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to hunt up that fort without Marcus. It, it, I mean, it he's been a really good friend, and and uh, it's really it's really a, an honor to go up there and hunt with him up there. Okay, let's take a quick break here, uh, Fred, and okay. I'm going to show the people what they've got to enter. And if you'll grab the two books that you have, so they see. Okay. All right, they people. Are. They're this right is what here. you put in. This is what you put in the chat to be entered. We'll have two winners of a book of your choice of Fred's that you will see. He's going to hold those up. This is what you put in there just exactly like that. Okay, we got, uh, we better zoom in a little bit. There's three books. Let me get the other one here. Okay. So there's three books: there's the Indian War and two um, and two metal detection the Treasure Coast and whatever your choice is, you, whoever wins. Okie dokie, sounds good. So we'll uh, we'll give them a minute or so. Go on, Fred. I'll I'll just interrupt you when it's time to to okay. go. Okay. So these. In this next case, we've got mainly just nothing but spikes and bolts. These are all from the 1715 fleet right here, all these spikes. Um, 
these bronze spikes, and then Terry's got some he's going to show you. These are bronze spikes. This bronze pin and this bronze spike was found with the uh, with the um, Maltese cross ring. And Terry's going to bring his his uh, his display case over for you to see. I am not uh, quite as organized as Fred. <laughs> <laughs> this is my display case. But anyway, all these bronze spikes right here, this is a keel pin, part of the keel pin, these bronze spikes, and they go back to the 1500s. We were in a two day uh, period, Fred and I were digging, and this, this was right, right in the area where he found the ring, you know, the uh, Lake de Malta ring. So, you know, we're down to the old stuff. These, these go way back. And, you know, I, I consider them a real trophy. They are indeed. They are indeed. Were you ready to do a giveaway, Fred? Yeah, let's give them away. All right, here we go. Let's go. You ready, Philip? I'm ready. It looks cool. Let's let's get a winner. Okay, here we go. We'll have two winners actually. JBP hobbyist. JBP hobbyist. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Go back and draw another one. Surfside Dan. Surfside Dan. You're the winners. JB Congratulations, Dan. Surfside Dan. And what we would like for you to do is, let me just pop that up real quick so you know. Send your name, address, and phone number. To treasure talk show at gmail.com. I will get them to Fred and he will get your books out to you. And thank you so much, Fred. That's a great prize. You're welcome. Yes, the very, very good prizes. I'm reading the comments here, and Joe Brown says Terry should have a padlock on that cardboard display. <laughs> We're going to go over and show you just a few more cases over the other side of the room here. Okay. These are, these are, you can see that I dug quite a few holes up in North Dakota. Well, that is a lot of digging. And then this, this here, this, this one has all the bent eagle buttons in there. These are all flattened and bent eagle buttons. That's a lot for sure. It's a lot of digging. I mean, That's there's literally hundreds of. That's incredible. That's a lot of digging. How many shovels did you wear out, Fred? I was just, I got one of those Predator shovels and it 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 worked it for me. Yeah. This is my this I call this my junk drawer right here. And it's got it's got a mix match of everything. And this is what Terry, this is rocket aluminum, and this is what Terry calls space, space poop. poop. Space poop, yeah. yeah. Space poop. And um, I uh, this this is one of the um, this is part of a a tile from the from the space shuttle Atlantis, and I did some contracting work up there for for um, NASA, and they gave me um, they gave me this piece of tile there. And I also took some of this aluminum up there and got it um, analyzed, and it's actually it is actually aircraft aluminum, aerospace aluminum, because it's alloyed with copper and uh, and zinc and different materials this is a uh, this is a this is a coin from the 1600s and that was found on my trip I took the legend all the way to Japan and did some metal detecting in Japan very cool this this is um, this is half of a buckle from a uh, from a lady's shawl and that would that would actually uh, hold hold the shawl on her. And this was right in, in South Carolina, and it was right uh, by a ferry crossing. This is a slave bracelet that a friend of mine gave me, and this is what they used to do use as, as a money uh, money system for buying and selling slaves. This is a uh, pocket knife, and it's. Got some ornate work on it. It's mother of pearl, and I believe that's from the Breckenshire, one of the ships that's from early 1900s that sank off of Vero Beach. 
And we did have a question from a guy, Bill Crow, wanted to know if Philip had any Treasure Coast detecting books in the shop. Absolutely, I have them in the shop. You got five from Terry. I've got them all. The only one I'm out of, I guess, is uh, Fred's book from the Dakota. Oh, okay. Okay. That one. So I do have, I even have Terry's new book, which is a good read. So we got them all. This this came from a trip up to, um, it's kind of a funny story here. This came from a trip up to South Carolina. I was out staying at Mount Pleasant and I was going out to Sullivan's Island and I went to uh, Fort Moultrie and I wanted to detect the beach around Fort Moultrie, which was not the National Park's property. So I went to the went inside to the museum and asked them if I could metal detect the beach. And they said, well, sure, but let's check with the local police. So they called the local police and they said, yeah, I could metal detect there. So I went out there metal detecting and I wasn't finding much. And there's a road right next to the Fort Moultrie that goes right down into the water. And it was a low tide with a lot of erosion. And I actually found uh, palmetto logs that were 20 feet. The, the actual structure was 20 feet wide and 100 feet long going into the water. And it, it was a crisscross of all palmetto logs held together by, by um, four, four inch by four inch, excuse me, two inch by two inch square pegs going through the layers of the wood. So I went back to the fort and I asked them, well, do you have a, um, do you have a boat ramp or a slipway at the fort? And they said, no, they've got a pier. And what happens at the pier, they would bring all of the slaves in at the pier, at the dock, and they would put them in uh, what they call pest houses, which for 10 days, then they would take the slaves over to Charleston and sell the slaves. Well, during the Civil War, the Union soldiers were at the fort at the start of the war, and they evacuated the fort, and they they went to uh, Fort Sumter. And the Ironside ships were firing at the fort because of the Confederates were there now. And I found this piece of cannonball right at the structure of the slipway. Hmm. And this is a cool. piece of a very large uh, thing. This was a this was oh probably foot and a half down, something like that. But the, the amazing thing is that the um, the National Park Service did not know that there was a slipway at that fort, and they sent me uh, uh, plans of the fort and ev everything, and nothing showed a slipway, and I drew it on there, and I sent them pictures. I took pictures of, with the distance of all of the uh, palmetto logs and describing it and everything, and they did not know that that was there. That's interesting. So, Give everybody a nice pan around of all your display cases, Fred, because okay. it's 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 amazing. Yeah, it's like a museum. And we did have another question. This one's from Scott Downey, and he's asking you guys: Are you detecting a lot less on the coast with all the new dirt they call sand? Take that. The, one. Detect the detecting has been very poor, and, and the fill that they're using. You know, they're, they're using it up against the erosion. They're not covering the beach itself. You know, it's up, up against the, the dunes. And, of course, that's where a lot of the treasure comes out of. But uh, we've had an east wind now, uh, or waves coming in. We just haven't had any really erosion at all. And right now, it's probably, it's just not very good right now. But that can change overnight. Yeah. I hope it does. I hope it, it changes Thursday night. But yeah, and, and later than this in the year when I have pulled out Spanish coins. So. Now, what detectors are you guys using on the beach? What are you, you, you using? You're using a Deus 2. I'm using a Deus 2, and I have the uh, Legend as a backup. The Legend goes with me all the time. I'm using a Legend, and I use a Manicor as a backup. Okay, interesting. That's a heck of a backup, huh? That's, yeah. This is this is some lead. Once in a while, you'll find some lead like this. This is lead sheathing, and uh, it would be on the bottom of the hull of the ships to protect it from Dorito worms, Dorito worms. And uh, one of the one of these uh, ships in the 1715 fleet was an English ship captured by the French and sold to the Spanish. 
and it had two and a half tons of this lead just on the just on the keel of the ship. And after after the lead in the 1800s, they went to um, they went to copper, and this is off of an English ship down in Fort Pierce, and that's copper sheathing from the bottom of their ship. And these other items are Civil War and and stuff. These these were up in Virginia, and some of the bullets, Virginia. And then I, uh, Marcus, and I went to South Carolina, and uh, mud mudlark relics took us out on their boat, and we found. Uh, some some Civil War bullets and this beautiful New York State seal button right here, this little tiny button, and it's a seal in New York, and they were down there fighting around Charleston, South Carolina. Interesting. And then this last case is um, Indian pottery. Um, this is local Indian pottery. This is all different designs from all over Florida. And I live in a little town called Miko, and which is an Indian name. And they used to trade pottery all over around here. And amongst the pottery, I found this, I believe it's a, uh, it, it's a piece of bone, but it's carved like an otter's head. You can see the, uh, I put it down there so you can see, you can see the eyes and everything on the otter's oh, yeah, head. That's cool. That was a decorative piece then, wasn't it, Fred? Yeah, I, I believe it. Uh, my story is the Indian guy carved it for one of his children. Very interesting. And then lastly here, I wanted to show you, if you ever get to North Dakota, you've got to visit the, the Lynch family um, Knife River Flint Quarry, and they own a lot of property there. And on that property is actually... Um, 3,600 quarries that the Indians have been going to for 1,200 years, and they've been quarrying this flint. And they would come, they, they would trade this flint all over the United States, and it's been found as far south as Florida. And just real quick, this is uh, the gentleman that was giving me the tour, gave me this knife, and this knife is made of, of um, lynch flint. Rib, uh, excuse me, Lynch um, Knife River Flint. Oh, very cool. Nice. Sharp, too, isn't it, Fred? It's really sharp. You could almost shave with it. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, do you have some pistols or something, old pistols? No, I do not. No. I thought you did. I don't know why. No, I've got that. Well, must be Terry who has the armory. I've yeah, got them. Terry's got those. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll have to find some pistols then for sure for the next show you do. All right. But it looks like, Jeff, it looks like our time just about up. Boy, the yeah, hour went good. Fast. Yeah, I know. Yes, Fred, thank you. That That's awesome. That's You have a regular museum there. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun putting it together, and it's, it's always a lot of fun out there with Terry all the time, too. Well, yeah. we've got some uh, new people coming with us this uh this time, uh, Fred, and I know that my wife and... Uh, uh, probably Ricky T's wife would love to see your collection. So they'll want a, a tour while we're down there, if and you don't mind. And we've got a little surprise for you guys when you come over, too. Yeah, that's what I understand. So uh, we're not going to give it away. We'll just surprise them. It's going to be a good time. And, and it's going to be a great time. We're going to be there. With Terry's going to be there, as always, as is Fred. He is one of our regulars on the our Treasure Coast uh, extravaganza. And there'll be a few more people uh, to join us as well. And we're going to have a really good time. We're going to hear some really good stories. And we'll give you an update on the detecting because there'll be a bunch of us that will be going out Friday and Saturday detecting. Um, and uh, we'll come to you Thursday night, 8 o'clock. It's too bad Phil couldn't be there. We wanted him to be there, but he, he's got to run the shop. Got to run the store. For sure. So if you need some uh, detecting gear so you can find some cool things like Terry and Fred have found, just holler at me. I'll be here tomorrow for sure. That's right. Because one thing for certain, if Phil don't have it in stock, you don't need it. You don't need it for sure. Well, does Phil have Terry's new book in stock? Yes, I do. Because okay. well, it, it's a wonderful new book and it, it's it's like going through my display cases, only you're doing it in a book. And it's fantastic, all of the finds that he's found. And I use it as a reference book there. 
It's a color too. You switch the color now. Yes, it, it, you you can tell the pictures. You can see everything so much better in color. That was a smart move to do that. Yeah, in my first book, you know, detecting the treasure coast. We're going to be working and finishing that up tonight, but that's also going to come out in color. We're going right. to redo the book in color. Awesome. Very, very good. We, we just can't wait to see you guys. We'll see you Thursday night. And, uh, Philip, it's time for us to go, man. Yes, it is. Thank and you, guys. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you to our many members here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, thank you, today. Treasure Talkers, for visiting my uh, my little museum. Well, we had a blast, uh, Fred, and we certainly do appreciate it. We appreciate you guys more than you will ever know, both y'all, uh, because you do a lot for us, and we appreciate it. And we're looking forward to being with you on Thursday and Friday. I know you guys will be at the Central Florida Metal Detecting Club Hunt. It's a big uh, club hunt on Saturday, am I not correct? That is correct. Yeah, we will be there. Both of you guys will be there, so you you won't get to hunt with us on Saturday, uh, but you're going to be making a lot of people very happy. So uh, that's a good thing. But we'll see you on Thursday night. Uh, thanks, Phil. Tell Jocelyn, I'm sorry for being morbid with the question. Morbid questions. We don't need any of those. That's why right. I've been that kind of person my whole life. What are you going to do? <laughs> Anyways. Thank you much. Thank you so much. Thanks, right, guys. Thank and thanks, Phil, and everybody watching. Make sure that you join us Thursday night. Thursday night. 8 o'clock. It's going to be 8 o'clock, not 7, 8 p.m., because uh, we got to have a little fun beforehand, uh, a little cocktail hour and some meal. And then uh, we'll be on at 8, and we're just going to tell some stories and have a really good time. So make sure that you're here, because you'll get a very, very good education on treasure hunting in all of its forms. Uh, so we'll see you on Thursday night. Happy hunting, everybody. And make sure that you dig deeper. And if you need anything, 813-237-1939. Myers Metal Detectors. If Phil don't have it in stock, you don't need it. You don't need it for sure. And we'll see you all Thursday. Have a good evening.